Welcome to part 7 of my tutorial. This part is about defining own character sets and using them in your program. Let's shortly recap what we did in the last part. In the last part we copied the original character set from the ROM, which is at E000, to a free location that is aligned to 1K in the RAM. And we did it with this loop, copying four pages. And then we have overwritten uh, the first character with the data defined in these data sets. Copying the original character set and modifying only few characters is what you typically do in programming languages like BASIC, uh, where there is not much functionality to change large amounts of, uh, of memory and you want to reserve only a small amount for data because you have to store it in additional data lines and copy it over. Uh, this is different in assembler. In assembler you typically don't do this. In assembler you instead create a complete character set and load it fully. And so this is what we want to do in this part. So I create a new folder and I copy over the original source. And now I remove the parts that we will not need. We remove the copying and of the original character set we remove copying of the uh, of the additional data in the program because we will load the data anyway and um, yeah we don't need that ROM location anymore and we don't need this information anymore so when we start this what happens we see nothing because we have not loaded any data yet all you see is that the characters 128 to 255 are displayed in inverse but there is no data in the memory so how do we get that data well we can rip it yeah it's in the rom so let's rip it to that end i go to the debugger let's have a look at the memory location and yeah we see the typical pattern here maybe i this is a typical pattern for graphics where you see FF and many zeros. And what we want to do is we want to um, write this character information now to a file. So I copy a folder and I say write memory to this file from EE and 1K. Okay, it said it wrote the data. So let's refresh. Here it is. I drag this in here and what we do now, here it is important that you have the latest version of the IDE installed because I implemented a number of um, number of uh, improvements. So you can check that if you click install new version and you go to the update site. And we see that here Woodson IDE 1.66 is the one that uh, you should have. And in fact, this is already installed here, so I don't need to perform the update. I can start right away. So you see this character uh, file gets a specific extension based, uh, gets a specific icon based on its extension. And when we open it, then it is automatically opened with the so-called graphics editor. The graphics editor is not really for editing but for converting between file formats. And what it can do, it can, for example, detect that this is a character, high-res character set, and it displays it as graphics, and you can save it as graphics here. So all I have to do is I press save here, and now I have the original Atari character set saved as a graphics. And um, I close this again, so I can now also do the reverse. I can open the graphics, and can now convert it to an Atari file format. So to that end, I can first choose what I want to have as output. So I want to have a regular character set. And you see, by changing the converter type, I get the additional scripts down here. These uh, scripts are provided with the IDE. 
and if I want and, and you see the default uh, output of it and you cannot change something if you really want to start converting you have to press that convert uh, create conversion button so I say I want to create a conversion and I can uh, enter the name of the character set file that I want to have I name it character set dot chr and when I and you also even see here the, the size of the original in, uh, image and you see the size that the resulting binary file will have I press save and it says okay it saved this file so when I press refresh now we see we have this file here so what's it is good for so we started with an Atari character set now we got a character set again well the point is that if I open this folder I have my favorite program assigned to edit this file and actually this is not my favorite program this is just the one that was registered as default this is my favorite program it's called graphics 2 and what I can do here is I can zoom and I can for example modify the characters I can make this work like this and maybe also change this character to be an actual copyright sign and save this overwrite the original file and when I now switch to the IDE I can press I can yeah, first of all store this yeah, so I can go back and uh, when we now look here we see that you here see the changed characters yeah, and what I can do is I can press that save button again and it now written the changed character file all we have to do now is we have to go in here Ooh. looks like I did it the wrong way so let's really change it in part 7 and what we have to do now is we have to import that binary character set information to the right location to that end we say okay let's define that we are now compiling to location defined by chr and we insert that means a binary insert this oops this character set here so let's look at the output of the console or maybe even here if we compile now and we check the size you see that this size is now 1k and something simply because the binary data for the character set was included into the file so when we run it yeah, we can now see the changed characters well it's a bit hard to see well maybe I do something that is more visible I go in here and put some dots into the character that is a space I save it I refresh and save and when I now restart the program we see that the character changes have been reflected in the file yeah this has been the full round trip there is actually much more I could tell about the um, editing here so if you want more specific conversions you can simply write some simple JavaScript but that is part of another part of the tutorial okay bye